You are first, Sorian. You are correct. And I did indeed hear your banjo intro. Sounds quite good. I see all that practice is paying off. Well done. All right. We continue. We forge on. Continuing to master gold. Which I'm still thinking that looks... I, th I still think it looks fairly good. Uh, time to finish this bit up here. As this bit looks great, I think. Hey, Bree! What's up? I'm actually thinking about picking up the band show. My great used to play all the time. I want to continue that down. Nice. Uh, story time. Streamer's choice. Okay. Let's, uh, let, let me, I got, I got to figure out a, a lore snippet. Um, okay. Well. I suppose I may as well go with the Raven Girl because I just read a whole bunch of stuff because Zombie said that he would come in, uh, Friday and, uh, redeem that. Hi, hi, I can't see you for a long time because you're soon, but want to stop by while I do some emo maintenance. Woof. Yeah, your emotes are looking awesome. Also, I just realized right before the stream, actually, as well as posting the uh, community promotional post, uh, you name your mods Oddguard, and I love that. I think that's awesome. <laughs> oh, oh, before I forget. Uh, is there anywhere we can find that, the, the sketches from your birthday stream? Is that, is that a thing the public can get a hold of? Because I might know some people that want to see that. <laughs> there might be some people that have heard some stories and they want evidence. And also other people that can't remember everything that happened. <laughs> <laughs> This, my memory is terrible. Uh, okay, story time. Story time. Okay, Raven. Uh, yes, do you have that? Let me show it to your Discord. All right, awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, oh, and I sent... Uh, well, I gave them your Twitch and your Instagram, but I came upon another artist that I think you love to meet uh last night just started on twitch uh she makes adorable character art and she's in particular been struggling with scales horns and tails i was like i know just the artist to go check out <laughs> uh horns in my activity feed that was lovely lynn art yeah uh i guess Last week or the week before, I joined Twitch, and I was rummaging through the bottom of the uh, the art category last night, as I am wont to do, and came across her, and she's quite nice, quite lovely. Is there anything left in that white there? No. Okay. That makes sense. Not in the newer way to do the same as scroll down and start at the bottom every time. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I got. I want to find. I'm on. When I'm watching Twitch, I was. Sorry, Samurai. We we will get to a story time. Uh. L oh. Uh. Lovely Lynn Art. L Y N Art. Uh, if you check your activity feed, it would have been from like early early this morning as i believe that was at like 1 a.m <laughs> eastern right wait wait i'm looking for weights Yeah, found found her drawing some critical role fan art. Yes. Yes. Uh follow her link trail to her Instagram. It's fairly good. 
She was painting a jester from Critical Role. I was like, yes. My people. Yeah, we love a critter. <laughs> I'm still rather proud of my opening statement. Oh, Jester! The cleric that thought she was a rogue but may have actually been a warlock slash sorcerer the whole time. Because, <laughs> uh, well, I think my theory is she's more of a warlock sorcerer than a cleric. But just got the cleric spell lists because D and D. Yeah, right. Like either that was a pact with a fey because he was not a god, or she's a sorcerer because he mentioned a few times that a lot of her power was hers. Say what now? See, a lot of question marks with that one. Okay. I should probably start my story time. Speaking of stories. Okay. So, uh... Okay, so I studied up a bunch on the Raven Guard rather recently... Uh, what in the Raven Guard? Okay, well, I'll I'll just start talking about their companies because there's actually a lot of like a pretty decent chunk of lore about each of their companies. Each of them have a name and a specialization. We'll start with first company, the Black Wings. These are the chapter's veterans. They are unsurpassed in their capabilities within the chapter. And like the first companies of most Space Marine chapters, they're mostly... Where should I put the birthday sketches? Uh, there's a general art uh, channel in the general channels. That seems the best place to put them. Yeah. That's for like all of the non-miniature art. Non-miniature, non-D&D art, <laughs> effectively. I feel like I need more yellow in here, honestly. Dude, there's so much yellow on this palette. So like most first company vets of the Raven Guard, they are often seconded to the other companies in singles, uh, small groups, or squads. The Black Wings in particular specialize in assassination. There is no one better at assassination. In the Raven Guard. So like while Eliminators are good. And Raven Guard Eliminators are better. Blackwing Eliminators have no peer. Even amongst the Assassin Arm. Their captain. Oh his name's on like the tip of my tongue. But it's like hard to say. As in something. As in something. As the Lord of Deliverance. Meaning that is his responsibility to oversee, uh, well, the entire chapter home, uh, uh, home moon technically, but also kind of Kiavar. It is not a direct rule; is only in regard to uh, space marine manners. Where's where's the yellow I'm using? Here it is. Second company are the Shadowborn. These are the first of the. For battle companies, standard frontline, uh, frontline companies. The Shadowborn are make made up of the best of the Raven Guard standard battle brothers. They're not quite veterans yet, but they are only ever promoted to the second company by mastering was referred to as the tri Trifold Path, which is a set of principles laid down by Kayvon Shrike to both give more of a structure to his teachings as well as hopefully 
I'm having a hard time figuring out which paint is new. There we go. Okay. Dealing with the Sable brand aged neck flaw in the Raven Guard. The uh, uh, thing that sticks out about the Shadowborn in particular right now is that their captain loves the use of the Phobos stealth armor for Space Marines so much that he is working on making the, sh the second a fully Phobos capable force uh, like a second Vanguard company in effect. Vanguard being companies that use all Phobos gear, all stealth armor. Well, that sounds cool on a tabletop. That's not great. <laughs> Phobos are not good by themselves. But anyway. Third company, Ghost Stalkers. These are the ones that I play as. When you see a red trimmed pauldron, you know, their third company. The other ones specialize in the part of the trifold path dealing with ambush. Compared to the rest of the Raven Guard, they are almost impulsive. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wow, I'm tired. I'm tired and I'm trying to remember all this. This is They do ambush, they use a lot of land speeders, bikes, jump troops, and it's also the company from which Cave and Strike, the current chapter master, came from, and apparently more chapter masters than any other company come from the third. Potentially because the over-vigilant nature of the Raven Guard being offset by le a quality of boldness in their leadership does it good. Fourth company is the Silent. They specialize in the stealth branch of the Trifold Path. So much so that they they fight in complete silence, which is hilarious when considering that they they use things like bolters, but they never speak. They use only uh, hand sim hand signals to communicate. Fifth company is. The Watchful. Is the Watchful or the Vigilant? The Watchful. Yes. Last wing of the Trefoid Path is Vigilance. Watch and know your enemy. And boy, do these guys emphasize that. In addition, they're, they are the only company to completely and wholeheartedly embrace all of the Raven Guard's armory and consistently use heavy weapons, tanks, artillery and, and the like in stark contrast with their with their other brothers. To try to offset their tendency to potentially not act at all when the time is right, waiting for that perfect moment too long. They actually utilize a lot of jump troops more so than any other company, and their uh, captain always leads those jump troops from the front. Sixth company are the Darkened Blades. They're the first of the reserve companies. The reserves company made entirely of battle line troops, so tactical marines, intercessors, infiltrators. Yeah, I believe that's it right now. While most Space Marine Reserve chapters are rarely put forward and are used only to fill in empties, uh, empty positions in the battle companies, Raven Guard utilize not only all of their companies in constant frontline warfare spread across the galaxy as they will, as, they, as the captains will, but... The companies themselves will even split up further into demi companies and battle forces, uh, strike forces, down to even a single squad going into some kind of 
in uh, Warfront. Dark and Blade specialize in hunting down tyrants wherever they might be found in the Imperium. The seventh, the Whisper Cutters. <laughs> They're the fast boys. Strangely enough. And let's see. So they use they heavily use bikes and land speeders, even though both of those are close support normally, but whatever I guess. And often fight alongside the scouts of the tenth company, so much so that many uh synth 7th Company Battle Brothers, instead of getting sent further up the line in the company structure, get actually sent, uh, request to get sent back to train scouts in the 10th Company as sergeants. The 8th... What is the 8th and the 8th's name? Is the only one I don't remember. Is the only one I don't remember. They're the reserve company for close support. So we're talking melee guys. Lots of jump troopers. And more than any other company, they change up their squad markings. Uh, like individually, they, they change their, their iconography out. Sometimes even within the same campaign or even the same swapping shoulders between each other in, in battle further confounding the enemy's attempt to figure out how many they're dealing with. The ninth are the Dirge Singers. The reserve company for heavy weapons. They utilize a strategy called the Chorus, which is a combination of heavy support, usually Devastators, Dreadnoughts and Storm Raven gunships in close, close, uh, not just close support in the sense of like closely supporting each other, but actually being able to redeploy very quickly. Additionally, their captain, I don't remember his name, their names are weird, is one of the most fervent doubters of the new Primaris Marines and keep all Ninth Company Primaris Marines within his personal per, uh, <laughs> visual purview even. However, this means that the Ninth Company, the uh, Primaris that leave his company are, are extremely, extremely good. Tenth Company are the Subtle, which are made out of Scouts and the Vanguard Company, all Phobos using. I mean, they're they're Raven Guard Scouts. Uh, good luck finding them. Those are the companies of the Raven Guard. All right, story time over. <laughs> that was. I read all that. Well, I I reread all that like Friday, so that was. That was a bit of a pull after this last weekend. I need more full improver because I need this a lot smoother. All new emotes upload. Who? Okay, Pizza's here. Some Hannah. Have a great night. Have a great night, Bree. I hope to catch you sometime soon. I'm hoping to catch your stream tomorrow at minimum. Enjoy your pizza. Man, I guess I'm gonna have to go out of my way to have more, like, topics ready to talk about at a drop of a hat. 
Uh, yeah, I'll. You ready for weird story time? I'm ready for weird story time. Uh oh, normally that's meant for more like 40k lore stuff, but I I guess so. Best childhood memory. Oh jeez, I don't have a lot of childhood memories. Um Best childhood memory. I don't even know. <laughs> Dude, I am like... I... I was tired enough that I was considering canceling tonight if I didn't... If I wasn't also tired before the last stream and I got two subs and a patron. So I was like, screw it, I'm just gonna push through. But like, my mind ain't working right now. I got no idea, yo. Best childhood memory. I didn't do a lot as a kid, first off. So I was homeschooled and generally kept, uh... Joey kept at home. So, like, I think childhood memory, and I think things I experienced through other mediums. The Aragon novels, you know, the Inheritance Cycle specifically. Um, the Adventures of Tiger and Dell. Uh, video games like. Well, Call of Duty 2 has been on my mind lately, but that's mostly because I was watching Bricky play the new Modern Warfare 2. By Call of Duty 2, I don't mean Modern Warfare 2, I mean Call of Duty 2. Uh, what are some other really good ones? Battle for West North. <laughs> to be honest, I've been so I've been so ill. I've not been able to move much or eat. I've been sleeping all day. Oh man, that's I'm sorry to hear that, dude. That's that's rough. That is no bueno.
Yeah, I didn't really have anything like a social life or friends till I was nearly 15. We had some good memories. A lot of playing Halo 3. A lot of Halo 3. Sharing stories of random nonsense we each ran into in the other scrolls oblivion. I had, I had a couple friends. Um, Trying to think of what else from way back when. Also, I've been way out of frame. So, Venom. This polygon's looking good. Oh, I'm glad you think it's looking good. Actually, okay, now I step back. From this angle, this is looking pretty good, actually. <laughs> you are not wrong. Oh, by the way, Venom, the uh, the sketch thing with Brie I was mentioning the other night, that is now in general art. Uh, I can actually bring it up on screen. Give me a second. Always puts it on the uh, wrong Google. Nope, that is. Nope, that is the wrong thing. Hold on. Jeez. Not only the wrong Google, but made a new Google instead of putting the right Google. There's the right thing. Oh, jeez. Um, Alright, now I got it on the screen. Here we go. Now it's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, the ones I was responsible for were the Capybara. I thought it was a... I, I remember that as a hippo, but I guess it's kind of close. Uh, Capybara, Blue Dragon, Sea Slug. <laughs> then it was the Canine and Japanese Spider Crab. <laughs> Which, that thing has no soul. Come on, look at those eyes. Uh, that thing is here for your heart. And then the camel spider plus atlas moth. So take a ca camel spider and now it can fly. That's what happens when you give me power in other people's streams. That's what happens. About as much chaos as happens here, all the time. <laughs> if 
Flying spiders when they soar on their web alone is terrifying, nonetheless having a way to move direction. Yeah, no, straight up flying. Like, full on flying flying. Like, outright flying spiders. Alright, I need to put the shadow effects, or reflection effect, not shadow, reflection effects. And the back tip of that pulger and to give it that, that real bit of metallic reflection here. Along there, and then when that's dry, around it is going to be grayish from the reflection of... Let's see if we can get some of this. No, not really. I need some black. For the reflection of the armor around it. Yeah, we'll use a little bit of this. This works. But yeah, Venom, you just missed Bree. Popped in to say hello before going off to get some za. I seem to do it, yeah. Well, you know, I figured if I was going to have mods, I have to get the alter egos. So, like, I always have one. Don't need the other at the same time. Not yet, anyway. That was always one or the other. That reflection will make a lot more sense once uh, everything else is painted. <laughs> Trust me, it makes sense. Okay. Do you think that's the pauldron done? I think it's the pauldron done. Which the reflections in that will make more sense when everything else is painted. Like that, there's a lot of other like moving pieces going on here. You can't really tell right now. So, uh, I suppose we could continue on to maybe his leg. Yeah. I've been kind of putting off his leg for obvious reasons. I mean, I suppose I could do. I could try doing this whole section and in one go. Let's see how it goes. Uh, let's what do we got for brown. Got some brown. Got some yellow. You know what you also missed, Venom, was story time about the Raven Guard. I didn't deliver it that well because I wasn't expecting it. And I'm pretty tired. I've actually been extremely tired all day. Just 
I almost didn't stream earlier, but then we got all those subs and new patron, so I'm like, well, guess I better stream again, just in case. But man, I am, I'm wiped. Who cashed in story time? Uh, Samurai. I guess because Samurai is rather sick right now and needs things to take his mind off it. Maybe you can call it early today? Oh, we'll see how it goes. I, I've only been going for 40 minutes right now, so that's hardly anything at all. I did start just before 8, so, you know, on time, really. Eh, we'll see how it goes. If it becomes excessively slow later on, I might call it, or, like, fairly early. Oh yeah, I want to have my reference in front of me. <laughs> Give me my reference. There we go. Now I have my gold. You're panting anything, Venom? You're expanding the power of the Raven Guard. You know they need it. Their recruitment is always quite low. I think this side must have hit something for... Or I swiped it with white at some point by accident.
You gonna redo the book details in the same scheme? I'm not sure yet. I'm still going to do the whole, like everything else, and then see what the composition looks like. Because I had the idea that the book light, the book might look very good in steel. I was also showing this to my mother earlier, and she recommended I laying up the steel in general. That's pretty dark. I think she might have might be onto something there. Okay, that that was a lot of pooling inside. I don't really need. Mom knows, but sometimes. But when she's right, she's quite right. As her number one most reliable food critic, being a mother does not make you infallible by a long shot. <laughs> That's how I use the gauge that. Mark bits just got here. Nice, nice. Yeah, I'm the one you can turn to and be like, here's a cooked good. Is it good? And I'll be like, okay, this part like all right apple pie the apples are good cinnamon's just about the right amount could use more sugar cross is decent like i will tell you what you need to hear to improve your product i'll do my best to be nice about it but you will get honest reviews Especially when it turns out you're making faux apple pie with yellow squash. It was close. She got close. She almost fooled me. Now I gotta find orc tutorials. I thought the idea was you send me you send me an orc, I panned up, and I'm your tutorial. No, I'm joking. That's still a ways out. <sighs> faux apple, yeah, faux apple pie. Gluten free, dairy free, and apparently apple free too. Sweetened with monk fruit, no less. It almost got me. Surprisingly close. But no, not nearly as sweet as, like, good apple pie. And it could be, it could get to that point. It just needs a lot more sugar added. She had take, she had brought back the sugar a bit because normally monk fruit over sweetened stuff. But uh, I was like, well, wait a second. You're already at a deficit on sweetness because you're using yellow squash, which is decently sweet but nowhere near as sweet as you know gray smith apples so you you need more yes i was trained by a french woman how to critique food <laughs> including her food and my ex was like me Give me the facts so I can get better. Something that surprised people all the time when I was with my ex. Like, she'd come to me with an outfit. Do I look good in this? And I'd be like, no. Because X, Y, Z. She'd be like, thank you. I'm gonna go change. My ex found that to be to her advantage very early on in the relationship. 
It's like, oh, I'm not gonna go out and look fat because my boyfriend has good fashion sense and makes sure I never actually look fat. Especially with how my ex's frame was, which was definitely leaning in that direction even when she was in good shape. Do I look fat in this? Yes. Now that has set a uh, standard for women going forward for me. If you're asking my input, you will get real input. You can appreciate it, or you can stop wasting my time. Okay, I think we're good for some yellow ink on there. Faux apple pie, potato, faux apple pie, fake, an imposter, and almost succeeded. Yes, it was made with yellow squash. Sweetened with monk fruit, but not sweet enough. Thus, it could not get past me. No, actually, it's like fairly decent. It's it's like a decent pie. It just it's it's not as good as like a good apple pie, which was the target. So I told my mother where she fell short of that target, and now she's making notes for next time. Yeah, so part of it is my parents are keto, and it's on my mom to make them stick to being keto. So she's been, and then on top of that, I'm gluten free, dairy avoidance. My sister is completely dairy free. So like, if you want to make the family a dessert, you gotta make something non-traditional. Or at least make a traditional thing in a non-traditional way, else no one's going to be able to eat it. Fapple pie? That, that's something else, dude. <laughs> that's something else. And then from there, I started talking about my ex. And some of her more redeeming traits, actually. Like how she was an incredible cook. And I regret it immediately, as you should. <laughs> and how she actually appreciated my honesty. And how it was hilarious shocking our friends when she would come into a room, ask me how her outfit made her look on her, you know, before we left the house. I'd be like, no, it makes you look fat because of X, Y, and Z. And she'd be like, thank you. And then go find a different outfit until I said, yes, that looks good on you. And now that's set a standard for all women going forward. Because, as you guys have kind of learned, if you want my input, you're going to get a real input. I'm going to tell you how to actually get better at the thing. I try to be a little bit nicer on here. I need to be less nice, honestly, I think. I think I need to be less nice on here. Yes. Congratulations. All, all uh, painting reviews from here on out will be much more strict. Don't be nice to be honest. Well, yeah, exactly. That's my point. Hmm. 
And that's why I tasted the faux pie first. So my mom wanted to know if it had worked. If she had, if she was able to trick even I with her faux apple pie. The answer was no. It wasn't a bad pie. But did not meet the expectation of what she told me it was, which was an apple pie. And I was like, this is not sweet enough. It's not a whole lot of tart. It's definitely not sweet enough. I couldn't tell her why I thought the crust was only meh. I'm still not sure myself after having three slices. I like pecan pie too. I like I like most baked goods, honestly. Pecan pie, cherry pie, blueberry pie, pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie. Oh, what's that very tart one? Isn't like... Ah, oh, it's something weird. My brain keeps going radish, and I'm like, that's not at all correct. What, but what? what is that pie? I love baked goods, and the potato goodness makes some very good banana pancakes. Oh, cool. Lately, one of my favorites has been carrot cake. Love me some good carrot cake. And there's a bakery near, well, in the state, which I guess for most places in the U.S. is fairly nearby. That makes an amazing gluten-free carrot cake. I'm not getting the angles right. I've kind of just been painting away and the angles aren't quite right here. I can do better. You know, I see one paint like this and it discourages me from ever painting again. <laughs> oh, well, it, does, does it look good or something? It's not even done yet. It's quite messy to my eye. How's it going, Lockhopper? How be you? Looks amazing. Thank you. I'm trying quite hard as this is a tier 4 commission. So either it looks like a museum piece when I'm done or I have failed. And of course, the bastard sent it to me pre-assembled. Blech. How much of your commissions depends on what you're asking for. <laughs> Have you not been privy to this conversation, Potato, yet? <laughs> no, I have an, uh, an application process on my website to give me as much info as possible, and I will still give you... Uh, I'll still play 100 questions with you, basically, to find out exactly what it is you want from me, and then I will figure out how much it'll cost you. But if it helps, I don't even bother with commissions that are under, uh, oh man, sheer minimums, a hundred bucks. My average commission is about six hundred. I think it was Zofiana that was asking me about doing three centurions in tier two. And now it's going to be, uh, I think, like 300. Yeah, average average commission for me is 600 bucks, and I, it usually takes me four, you know, three, four, five days at most. This White Scars one is just, uh, this one's weird. This is not like normal commissions. If you were given a free reign for a tier 4 commission, well, this is kind of akin to free reign for a tier 4. Like, he did, because it's a chaplain, I'm not stuck to the, uh, I'm not stuck to the white armor recipe, which was the main, the, the main thing that was, that was, uh, the crux of this commission, and one of the reasons why it took so long. Uh, after that, I was given pretty much just, you know, make it look good. 
effectively for the directions. So yeah, this is basically it. This is me. This is someone giving me a Primaris Chaplain on a bike, and telling me just tier four go nuts. That that that's that's what this is. Hey, I wasn't asked to put Namatog Metal on it, for example. I was just. It was basically that's tier three. That probably is a bit much for tier three even. But I mean, I've been working on this commission for so long. I was like, screw it. I want to have a little bit of fun. Uh, <laughs> but. Let's say that's that's tier three. It's considered tier three within the commission's bounds. So I have to make it look a a full uh what's the word? What's the term? What's the term in statistics? A full factor, higher qual quality. If that if that makes sense, if that terminology is remotely correct. So, I'm pushing myself. I'm pushing myself. I'm flexing my artistic muscles here. I am being bold and trying new things in a attempt to blow people away with this. This is Tier 4. And it's also a test run of doing Kasara Khan, which is also a Tier 4. A smaller model with not as much detail, but I have to make lo look also a factor better than his his all his brethren which some people have already told me are some of the best white scars they've ever seen so i mean <laughs> great i have to i have to i have to exceed that by a noticeable quantity my music ended how dare Mm. See, so yes, I am trying quite hard on this. I'm gonna put some yellow ink on that leg. Hmm. Do I still have some yellow ink somewhere here? Oh, here it is. Do I play Warham? I do indeed play Warham. I do indeed when I can, which isn't super often. Because right now I don't have a car and I have to work uh, around the clock basically to somehow skeep my way into being able to pay my bills at the end of the month. Uh, well, beginning of next month, really. Uh, but I do play. I do indeed deploy my literal army of raven guard there's more up there there's more on a desk behind me there's the other white scars there's several shelves and bags and other stuff worth of raven guard most are not panned i own i can tell you exactly how much you know, why do i have so many pings all of a sudden good Lord. It's former trolling me. Okay. Oh, no, it's everyone. It's everyone pinging in. Very good. Okay. Carry on. Uh, I can tell you exactly how many dudes I have. So I keep a Google Doc tracking my entire collection. Which isn't that hard because it doesn't grow very often. 205 models in total. 67 of them is fully painted as of last count. With 172 of them being fieldable. Uh, 
In practical terms, I could probably field four, maybe four and a half entire games worth of forces simultaneously. Yeah, decent sized army. Uh, by Space Marine standards, a little, a little over two companies worth. As their standard organizational structure is a chapter made of ten companies, 100 Bow Brothers each. And I actually do have a full third company. Not fully painted, and I don't think fully built, but fully assigned anyway. There's not that many left. Maybe when this commission is done, if I don't have any, th any other commissions coming in, which actually would not be a great thing financially, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there, but hey. Uh, when this commission is done, I would very much like to get back to working on that project of a fully painted, fully ready for war third company. You know what sucks is I started working on the full third company several years ago, and then with the most recent Space Marine book, they threw out the old company standard structure out the window, which I had been very painstakingly adhering to. And now I'm not sure what to do about it. So, up until a couple, what, a year ago? Yeah, around a year ago? Space Marine companies, this entire time, all like, what, like 40 years of Warhammer... Space Marine companies had uh, their battle companies anyway, like like the third, had a standard structure. You have your command squad, which is made up of your captain, two lieutenants as of the Primaris Marines coming about. Then you have your company ancient, which is your standard bearer, company champion, a usually an assigned apothecary usually an assigned chaplain and some company veterans which were you know depending on the chapter hand picked hand picked veterans that were like the captain's uh how do you pronounce that cordery court whatever his his like bodyguards basically his honor guard if you will then you have six 10-man squads of battle line, which could be then divided up into 12 five-man squads. Then you add two squads, 10-man of close support, and then two squads, 10-man of heavy support, and then your assigned uh, dreadnoughts and vehicles, etc., etc. And that would make 10 Battle Brothers, because Battle Brothers is, you know, combat infantry, actually, specifically. So that the command squad and the the officers don't, and, and specialists don't count. Now they made it so that as long as you're more or less at 100 Battle Brothers, it doesn't matter what your, squ what your squad makeup is. As in theory, they're able to uh, re-outfit them at will, according to the new version of the code in lore Codex Astartes, to make room for you to actually be able to make reasonable, uh, reasonable, fluffy, you know, lore accurate setups with all the new Primaris Marines, which have a bunch of different squad types, because back in the day. Before the Primaris Marines, the new, bigger Space Marines, which were released back in 2017, you had for Battle Line, like, yeah, Battle Line, you had Tactical Marines. And that was it. But that was all you needed. Because Tactical Marines, how they work is you have seven normal Space Marines with a bolter and grenades and a bull pistol. And you have a special weapons guy. Which would have like a plasma gun or a grav gun or a melta gun. 
And you have a heavy weapons guy, which is like a heavy bolter, uh, grav cannon, las cannon, missile launcher, like a serious like anti-tank gun. So like the special weapons would be anti like heavy infantry or light vehicles, and the heavy weapons guy would be anti vehicles. Then the sergeant can take a melee weapon and a combi weapon. So a combi weapon is a bolter plus a special weapon. So you have two special weapons, a melee weapon and a heavy weapon alongside eight bolters. And they're all good at melee because they're all space marines. So tactical marine was pretty flexible. Grav can grav cans are awesome, dude. Let me show you my grav cannon. Subsa. Uh, this is my this is one of my company veterans. He is the company veteran squad at full strength can take a uh, can take a heavy weapon themselves. So this is my company vet grav cannon guy. I am very proud of this dude. I very much like this guy. Graf cannons mess people up too, by the way. This is a this is on the table an efficient weapon. This is a good weapon right here. Yeah, that was before I was using Micro Soul. <laughs> also, what's crazy? This is magnetized because company vets can have anything they want. I can full on take this guy apart and give him something else completely. Completely different loadout incoming. Actually, a lot smarter initially seems. Is it, oh, the spell jammer book, right, right. Uh, the small book to begin with, with one third is rules. The rest of giant list of all the ships and their stats, weapons, etc. That sounds pretty cool to read and stuff. Is that going into the notch? There we go. So that's a grav cannon. Anyway, all right, back to I guess this is if samurai, samurai, if you're still there, that th this is a bit much better story time, um, because I'm feeling this one. I absolutely love grav cannons in other games because they're so OP. Grav cannons in this game are fairly good. Like as far as space marine weapons go, which aren't the best right now, grav cannons are pretty good. It's a lot simpler than I thought, which is a very good thing, and still D and D so set up in a way where I can do all the things I want to do with no issues. Awesome. That's amazing. So, after the tactical squad, you'd have assault squads, which is 10 guys with jump packs, chain swords, bolt pistols. One guy can take a couple different types of special weapons, uh, like a flamer, a plasma gun, maybe a melting gun. Then a sergeant can take like a plasma pistol, whatever. Uh, yeah, that I think that's it. Then, uh, for the heavy weapons, you have Devastator Squads, which is a sergeant with a combi weapon, and then four guys with heavy weapons, and four more guys with, or five more guys with bolters. Plasma Rifle? Yes. That being said, I have, an, I have to enable Unearth Arcana 7, which is modern magic, a ton of technology-based spells. I'm still working on finding a good sci-fi weapons list for things like laser guns and stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, plasma guns. Um, don't I have, uh, something with plasma around here? I've got my Mortaria with... Plasma pistols, but I still gotta fix it. Whereas one of his plasma pistols popped, you know, broke effectively. Oh, duh, my hell blasters. I have to go back at some point and do a better job of this. But this is a pl assault plasma incinerator. This is a better version of a plasma rifle or plasma gun. This thing's gnarly. In actuality, the, this squad with this gun is gnarly. Man, this is making me want to play 40k. It's been a while. It's been a good. It's been a good solid tick. I think. I don't think I've played since the tournament back in August. That was like right before or right as I was starting the stream. Mm. 
we got this well known homebrew of D&D 5e called Fifth Age. It got a lot of weapons, all seem balanced. I like how they work, but implementing them into D&D in my game is going to be like three days of work minimum. So you've been at one of these tables with a ruler before table? Oh, you mean like, have I actually played 40k games? Yeah, many times. I've even played in tournaments. Not big ones, but local tournaments. My most recent tournament, I came in third, actually. I uh, even have a... Not a plaque, but like a poster sheet. Um, before. With, uh... Decisive wins against Drukari, Necrons, and Space Wolves, in that order. I surprised myself massively. <laughs> yeah, no, I can... I don't just talk about the game. I I play the game when I can. And I've started actually getting good at it. You know what the, the biggest and trickiest things for me to get over, but now that I'm over it, and now I understand why so many other people have a hard time with the game? They... It's like they build their list, and they think about just like the ability to kill the enemy. It's not how you win 40k. You win 40k by... By getting victory points. Victory points straight up is how you win. You win by having the most victory points. So, like, really, you just need to focus on whatever is going to get you the most victory points. Regardless of how well you're killing the enemy or not. Grand, it definitely helps to kill the enemy really hard. But... Like, you can you can win the game right now after your opponent tables you. Tabling meaning they've wiped all of your forces off of the table. I know almost nothing about the game. You win a 40k by being a troll. <laughs> New naming system work? Uh, does it work? Let's find out. Stuvaras Ision? Is that is that a C or a G? Stuvarius Lissaro. Hopefully it's not like actual plans I'm Sado and Rocco anymore. <laughs> or Dusto. <laughs> it's a C? Okay. Stuvarius Ision or Yeah, I'm gonna say Ision. Stuvarius Lissaro. Etrola, huh? As so close to literal. <laughs> oh no, I wanted to, I wanted to zoom in more. I was getting real close. Uh, never mind. I can't. Are you, are you troll of one? You troll of two? Okay. Gestrion or Gestrion? Gestrion one, Gestrion two, three, four. Okay. Suvoatov and Halvoter. Oh, oh, and uh, Hecarix or Hesarix. Hesarix? I'm gonna go with Hesarix. That sounds better. Gestrion. Yeah, Gestrion. Uh, I feel like you're getting there. You're not quite y yet there. I feel like a lot of these are very close to like normal words like gesture or like I see Suvoatov and my mind immediately jumps to Mazeltov, <laughs> and I want to smash some plates. <laughs> Making his name suit my brain a lot more than you would think. Yeah, I don't know how I make my names, uh, and they come out like decent. Like Teraviso. 
uh, for example, or, um, oh man, I'd have to go back through some of my writing where I just have, like, names, I just, I just pull out of nowhere. Oh yeah, Potato, you have all your stuff that you should from the Patreon, by the way. I uh, Between streams, I made sure to go through and give you all your stuff. All your stuff. Oh, good. That was an error. I really couldn't tell, and I was already, like, we were already going over the Moon Moon stuff, and I was like, I don't feel like going over the whole, <laughs> uh, the whole split in the thing. <laughs> moon Moon stuff. Yeah, Moon Moon stuff. Oh, I need my, uh, reference. Yeah, this this looks much better now. This looks way better. Moon, 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 moon. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Moon 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 I don't know why I tried going on to a different like rhythm when I could have just gone with what's already playing in my ear. I just I forgot it was playing. And spell jammers and their combat works is great to is great too. Spell jammers is the name for like the control helm of your ship. Why are they called spell jammers? Do they jam spells? Do they jam spells into other objects? There's side they use side initiatives, so you roll as a group for a side, like bad guy, good side, and when it's your side turn, you choose your character initiative. Huh. You just fly your shit, huh, alright. My mind just went super blank, by the way. Like, I just, I just, I ceased existing for a moment. Don't mind me. Carry on with your conversation. I am not even here. Like, I'm not even sure how I continued painting just then. That was... Nope. <laughs> Weapon systems are run by other crew members of the ship, not the spell jammer or the spell jammer's helm. Right. Yeah, spell jammer is just a flowing magic chair. Why is it called a spell jammer? Okay. I need to know. 
the linguistic practical root why this word came about <laughs> it is required Don't question naming conventions, okay? It could have been called the Route 2 Fly scene. I'd be fine with it. That's fine if you're fine with it. I'm over here, like, with that, that, I've been studying history my entire life, and linguistics has a lot of, a lot to do with it. Things are named a, a thing for a reason. Like it's how that's how language is able to somehow work is that we have basic names for things and then we when we find something new we use s similes to name other things something that makes sorta kind of sense there's got to be like a reason why they call them spell jammers. If I knew that reason, I have a better time understanding what I'm supposed to be picturing in my head. This is why many fantasies have this thing of like names are powerful. I guess that would, uh, read to a fly scene, I'd be fine, but I guess that would make more sense to spell to Right, yeah, I mean, that right there would make more sense than... Like, is it a helm? Is it a chair? What does it do? Why does it do it? Why, why was it invented? Like, what problem was it solving? Because, like, you make things to solve... You, you invent new things to solve problems. If a thing's inventive, it's to solve some kind of problem. Otherwise, people wouldn't buy it. Even in purely aesthetic things are bought to solve a problem. Either the problem is your environment is too bland for your tastes or you are seeking fulfillment in external items, but it's still solving a problem. <laughs> so, why were these things invented? What was the problem they were solving? Here's the item that helps make the image more. Well, I mean, it's a literal image, so yeah, probably. <laughs> it would probably help. Spell jamming helm. These are all seats. I do like the scorpion one, though. Alright, let me get these on screen so we can talk about this. I feel like this is worth talking about right here. Briefly. Okay. Spell jamming helm. These are chairs. The function of this ornate chair is to prepare, propel and maneuver a ship 
on which it has been installed through space and air. It can also propel and maneuver a ship on water or underwater, provide the ship is built for such travel. The ship in question must weigh one ton or more. The sensation of being in tune to spell jammer helm is akin to pins and needles affect one experiences after one's arm or leg fall asleep, but not as painful. While attuned to spell jamming at home and sick in it, you gain the following abilities for as long as you maintain concentration. And then it goes into like all this stuff. It still does not explain why it's called such and why they're chairs. But called a helm. Is it simply because it has the helm of the ship now? Okay. So like the helm part, I can I can be like fine like helm of a ship whatever good enough why the spell jamming part <sighs> like what is the in-universe reason bugging me so what happens when you have these half-baked fantasies sometimes you get situations like that and it bugs me Never said, just tells you suddenly what Spelljammer is, never goes into details as to why it's named that way. Imagine it was invented by one Walter Spelljammer and just like a last name. Ah! <laughs> Listen, we already have too much of that in Warhammer. Do you know why a land speeder is called a land speeder and a land raider is named a land raider? Like, quick pull to the entire chat. Like, does, does anyone know why a land speeder is called a land speeder? Or a land raider is called a land raider? Invented by Michael Spear and Tomaeus Tim Raider or something like that, I'm assuming. Oh, worse than that. Worse than that. Both were found rediscovered. The technology was rediscovered by the techno archaeologist Arkin Land. I kid you not. Yeah. Yep. Also. You know the term Astartes, and how for 40 years it has been considered to be the High Gothic term for Space Marines? Like, it was High Gothic for Space Marines. That's what we all thought the word meant. Astartes. After 40 years, they have retconned that and replaced that with... No, the head uh, geneticist that, that worked alongside the Emperor on the Astartes project. Her last name was Astartes. Harkin with these nuts in your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. To be fair, Arkin 
he, he's actually a pretty cool character in the Siege of Terra series. Like, you, you actually meet him. You actually spend quite a decent bit of time with him. I think he's also in the Horus Heresy series, but I've not gone that far in that series yet. Which, I mean, considering the Siege of Terra happens after the Horus Heresy, directly after the Horus Heresy, that might have been a goof up on my end. But, I mean, when I started really grabbing the books... Uh, they had just started releasing the Siege of Terror, so I kind of wanted to be in a series as it was happening. And I was always interested in the uh, Siege, of, Siege of Terror. But yeah, it's not, a, it's not a land speeder because it speeds over land. It is not a land raider because it raids land. But because they were rediscovered by Arkin Land. Yeah. Because his last name literally is L-A-N-D. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, we also learned one of the Emperor's, like, normal names. At least one of his most recent ones. And it's so dumb that I, I can't even remember it. Like, I'd have to look it up again. Even though I've listened to the book where it's revealed a bunch of times. Next thing you're gonna tell me, the Death Star is named because it was invented by one... Death Starticus. <laughs> no, Star Wars is not nearly as dumb as Warhammer in that regard. Where where the angry Marines... Uh, uh, Primarch is named Angron. <laughs> or, or the petty... Bitter, uh, uh, petulant, uh, Iron Warriors Primarch is named Percherabo, or, or the Raven Guards Primarch is Corvus Corax, or Latin for Raven Raven, or the Iron Hands Primarch is named Ferris Manus, or Iron Hand. <laughs> Or, uh, or, uh, what are the other, what are the other, like, really good ones? I mean, Rabuti Gilliman, Raboot Gilliman, his name is fine inherently, it's just that there's so many ways of making a joke of his name, it's absurd. Roboat Girly Man, Robot Gorilla Man, Rabuti, uh, G Man, <laughs> Papa Smurf, <laughs> it just keeps going. Lehman Russ is both a Primarch and a primary battle tank of the Imperial Guard because the Space Wolves found the design for it and so they named it after the Primarch. Which apparently back in the old, 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 old like rogue trader lore, Lehman Russ was actually a general, not a Primarch, so that was a thing. Oh, the Psyker Legion, the Thousand Sons, and their heavy Egypt with their heavy Egyptian themes. Their Primarch is named Magnus, who is missing an eye. Thus, he is referred to as the Cyclops, or the Crimson King. So he has one eye of Magnus. Hmm. Where are some other really stupid warrior names? Uh, all the orc names are great. Fight me. Orc names are perfect.
Okay, I need more... Like, gray. I think this isn't late enough.
I have just been vibing, by the way. Between fatigue and, I guess fatigue, because my brain just kind of went blank, I have just been vibing. Pardon me. I might need more yellow ink, I think.
Yeah, this was why I was like, I might do the book and steal. Because the amount of gold going on in this guy is a bit insane. Chris, if this side is not done with bronze, because the... Actually, I'm gonna leave that too, because maybe that'll be steel as well. Who knows? We still got a lot to go, guys. It is quiet. In case anyone was not aware. Hey, yeah, where's my reference?
Alright, that's looking pretty good. Alright. It's so quiet. Ugh. I can feel my eyes closing on themselves. Ugh. Not even sure why I was so tired today, but I am. I'm still here, just working doing this stuff while well, I'm thinking about not being here. <laughs> I am considering ending a bit early. Because, uh. Yeah, I am exhausted. I need more, uh, energy going on. I'm here without sound. Well, I appreciate all the lurks. Just, I'm falling asleep here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm painting myself. What are you painting, Venom? What's uh what's on Venom's uh craft table right now? Yeah, what color are you painting yourself? Blue Garden Edition for Blue Man Group. That makes sense. But yeah, no. I feel like I could fall asleep. Ah, <sighs> uh, we're gonna bolt my chaplains, dude. Chaplain double trouble over here. Wonder if you could get legitimate worth out of fielding two chaplains at once. Well, anyway. Uh. Yeah, we've had two hours. I could pass out. <laughs> so I'm thinking I'm gonna call it. Uh, I was low energy from the get go. Oh, this doesn't seem like. I figure if I got the paints for one, may as well pick out spots and bolt. Yeah, that makes sense. That does make sense. Um, I do think the progress we're making is quite good. I'm liking how this is going on this side, and we'll eventually swing back around to redo those sides uh, better, because I do think these sides look more metallic. So we'll pick up on that tomorrow, but for now, yeah, I'm going to go, uh, I'm, I'm going to go put my uh, brain back in my skull case. Because I feel it dripping out of my ear. So I will catch you all. Hopefully tomorrow. If you had a bike or a jump chap. I just like all chaplain models. I may hunt down one of each eventually. I mean. Chaplain are, models are very good. I mean just look into this guy's chest piece. It's pretty rad. Alright. Thank you for hanging out. Thank, thanks for lurking. I do appreciate the lurking. It just. I got my limits. <laughs> Alright. Have a good night, everyone. Oh. And, uh, shout out to Make the Potato, the current single sexy wind leg. There. My, uh, my, uh, contractual obligations are indeed complete. <laughs> you have received one, sh one shout out per stream. I don't think you can put text before the... There we go. <laughs> still, ma still makes me laugh. Still great. Alright. Hopefully see you guys tomorrow.